Good day and welcome to our short explanation of how to team using Broadcom Nix. In this case I'm going to do it on a uh, Dell server. There are a number of things you need to know in advance. The, the first thing is that uh, the typical way to do teaming through uh, the uh, device manager going into properties and playing around in here will not work. You need to have the Broadcom software. So that is called Broadcom uh, Advanced Control Suite, uh, currently at version 4. Um, and the, the Broadcom software, uh, after you download it, which by the way you can download from your vendor, be it HP, be it Dell, whoever, or you can download it directly from Broadcom. Uh, what you want to make sure is that firstly you've got the uh, drivers that are most current uh, on your server for your Broadcom NICs. Secondly, you want to make sure that uh, you're running the latest version of the Broadcom Advanced Control Suite. If you are attempting to team a NIC and you see the teaming driver is not currently installed, please install the teaming driver. You either need to reboot the server uh, or you need to uninstall the Broadcom software, uninstall your NICs, uninstall any Hyper-V NICs that you've got, then reboot the server, then install the Broadcom Control Suite again. So once you've got the Broadcom Control Suite installed, you will find that if you simply click Start and go into the Broadcom Advanced Control Suite, where you can see that uh, there's a teaming menu item, but you uh, often won't be able to get into it. And that's because you simply most likely either clicked on the uh, notification area and then double clicked on the Broadcom software, or uh, you launched the Broadcom software from the Start menu, neither of which will work. What you need to do is right click on it and select Run as Administrator. Yes, that's silly, but that's what you have to do. Then what you need to do is go to Teams and boom, now you've got Create Teams. Isn't that nice? You click Create Team. Uh, you can run this through the standard wizard or you can run it through expert mode. Uh, the expert mode uh, just simply toggles it to uh, run all of the options in a single screen. We'll go through the wizard just because it's fun. I'm gonna call this uh, Team 2. I'm gonna click Next. Uh, in my case, I like to use uh, 802.3, the uh, Link Aggregation Configuration Protocol, or LACP. Uh, turn that on. Um, and uh, also, you uh, most likely want to turn on Hyper-V. Most uh, servers these days are simply hosts, and what you want to do is be able to uh, offload some of the CPU uh, work to the, to the physical NICs, and this will allow you to do that. Specifically, this turns on virtual machine queuing, and basically what that does is move the processing uh, that's required, uh, the packetization and things, from the uh, operating system right into the NIC, and that is a very, very helpful thing. And if you don't do it, you will potentially have troubles with dropping connections. The only real information I get was from this blog which uh, I believe was in Spanish, and I did a translation to English. I'll put a link at the bottom, but you can read it here. Basically, it's simply saying uh, it turns on uh, VMQ, so that's a good thing. As I said, if you don't uh, turn it on, you may end up with this problem, which Dell describes as inter intermittent connectivity loss with Broadcom blah, 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 blah. So it boils down to they want you to turn it on as well, turn on Hyper-V mode. So I'm going to click Next. And it's, uh, we just want to make sure that they're connected. Uh, now, take a note that uh, it is often important to make sure that the cables into these uh, network cards are not connected when you're doing the teaming. We have found, well, Juniper used to, anyway, flat out tell you that you had to have your NICs disconnected before you did a team. So uh, if you're seeing any other troubles, uh, just physically unplug them, create the NIC, uh, create the team, the virtual NIC, plug them back in, and you're on your way. So I'm going to click on this one and click Add, this one and click Add. Now, I actually don't want to create this, but if I did, I would simply click Next. The team would be completed, and we would be happy. I already have a team completed. There it is, with two NICs, and life seems to be good. All right, in my case, I want to go in and uh, use that network card for my for the local server as well as for the Hyper-V machines. So I just right-click on the network down at the bottom right like I just did. And here you'll see the VNIC, the V Ethernet. And I'm going to go set a static IP address. And uh, I'm not going to show you that because I need to keep that private. But that's it. I'll set a static IP address. Then, then uh, I'll come back in a second and we'll head off to the Hyper-V and show you how to use it in there. So if you're using Hyper-V, what you uh, will want to do is go into Hyper-V uh, Manager and go into Virtual Switch Manager and um, click New. And in my case, it's an external switch. I assume most of you will be the same. 
The name of it uh, doesn't make any difference, um, but uh, I'm going to call it the same as I called my physical neck for V1. There we go. Uh, notes, it's okay. And you can see here I have four physical necks and one virtual neck, uh, the BASP virtual neck. Um, and uh, allow management operating system to share this adapter. If you don't turn that on, uh, that means that these uh, the NICs that are included in that team will operate exclusively for Hyper-V and will not be uh, functional for your local operating system. So that's probably not a good idea for most smaller networks. Uh, I don't need a VLAN here, so I'm just going to click OK. Yep, I know it's going to disrupt the network. And bingo bongo, what's up? If you have any questions, please get a hold of us at www.urtech.ca. Thank you. Bye-bye.